Well, good morning. 
We'd like to welcome all of you to worship this morning, especially visitors out there. Hopefully you feel welcome, and to help with that, let me kind of explain how service is going to work today. Uh, so on your way in, if you wanted one, there was a printed bulletin. If you didn't grab one of these, don't worry, because everything will be up there on the screens, uh, so you can follow along in either place. For the Lord's Supper, if you're interested in taking communion with us today, uh, what we do is in the pew, there's these little attendance cards, or if you're at the back there, I think they're by the windows back there. Um, but the front side of that card is a registration card. We encourage everybody to fill it out. The only thing, if you're a visitor, the only thing that you'll get in the mail is a, just a thank you letter from the church saying, hey, thank you for coming to visit us. Uh, we don't add you to a mailing list beyond that. And then uh, if you would like more information about our church, all you do is check where it says interested in membership. But on the back side of that card, we list, this is what we believe the Lord's doing for us uh, in the Lord's Supper. And so if you agree with the statements on there, you're more than welcome to come up and take communion today. Uh, that card, once you fill it out, it goes in the offering plate when it comes around later. We offer a couple choices with communion. One of the options is to take it right in the pew. Uh, so for many different reasons why people uh, do that. Sometimes it's mobility, sometimes it's just health preference. Um, but those kits were available on your way in in those baskets in the back back there in the narthex. Um, otherwise, up here, we'll do continuous line style. So you come up the middle, the, they'll usher you up. We'll have gluten-free hosts and individual cups right here. Pastor Craig will be distributing the regular hosts. Then we'll have individual cups of wine and grape juice. The grape juice is yellow. And I'll be at the very end with the common cup. So again, whatever your preference or need is, uh, hopefully we address that. The other thing is you all are very, very lucky because we're doing something new today after church. We have donuts. You make everybody at all the other church services jealous because what can you get possibly after church today? A donut, that's right, yeah. Our Board of Education is putting out donuts today. Uh, we're gonna tr there's no promise this is going to happen every week, uh, but we're trying to encourage some fellowship. So after service, if you want to come down by the kitchen, we're going to have maybe 15, 20 minutes, just people hanging out, talking, drinking coffee, eating donuts. And then if you want to stick around for Bible study, you can do that. Uh, otherwise, let's stand up and greet each other, and then we'll get things going. All right, well, blessings now as we sing our first few verses of our opening song, Earth and All Stars.
Please rise for the invocation. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. O my God, in you I trust. Let me not be put to shame. Let not my enemies exult over me. Indeed, none who wait for you shall be put to shame. They shall be ashamed who are wont only treacherous. Make me to know your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation. For you I wait all the day long. Remember your mercy, O Lord, and your steadfast love, for they have been from of old. Remember not the sins of my youth or my transgressions. According to your steadfast love, remember me for the sake of your goodness, O Lord. Good and upright is the Lord. Therefore, he instructs sinners in the way. He leads the humble in what is right and teaches the humble his way. All the paths of the Lord are steadfast love and faithfulness for those who keep his covenant and his testimonies. Let us now confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you exalted your Son to the place of all honor and authority. Enlighten our minds by your Holy Spirit, that confessing Jesus as Lord, we may be led into all truth through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated as we continue with our readings. The Old Testament reading is from Ezekiel chapter 18, verses 1 through 4, and 25 through 32. The word of the Lord came to me. What do you mean by repeating this proverb concerning the land of Israel? The fathers have eaten sour grapes, and the chil children's teeth are set on edge. As I live, declares the Lord, this proverb shall no more be used by you in Israel. Behold, all souls are mine. The soul of the Father as well as the soul of the Son is mine. The soul who sins shall die. Yet you say, the way of the Lord is not just. Hear now, O house of Israel. Is my way not just? Is it not your ways that are not just? When a righteous person turns away from his righteousness and does injustice, he shall die for it. For the injustice that he has done, he shall die. Again, when a wicked person turns away from the wickedness he has committed and does what is just and right, he shall save his life, because he considered and turned away from all the transgressions that he had committed, he shall surely live, he shall not die. Yet the house of Israel says, the way of the Lord is not just. O house of Israel, are my ways not just? Is it not your ways that are not just? Therefore I will judge you, O house of Israel, everyone according to his ways, declares the Lord God. Repent and turn from all your transgressions, lest iniquity be your ruin. 
cast away from all the transgressions that you have committed and make yourself a new heart and a new spirit. Why will you die, O house of Israel? For I have no pleasure in death of anyone, declares the Lord God. So turn and live. The epistle reading is from Philippians chapter 2, verses 1 through 4 and 14 through 18. So if there is any encouragement in Christ, any comfort from love, any participation in the Spirit, any affection and sympathy, complete my joy by being of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. Do, not, do nothing from rivalry or conceit, but in humility count others more significant than yourselves. Let each of you look not only to his own interests, but also to the interests of others. Do all things without grumbling or questioning, that you may be blameless and innocent, children of God without blemish in the midst of a crooked and twisted generation, among whom you shall shine as lights in the world, holding fast to the word of life, so that in the day of Christ I may be proud that I did not run in vain or labor in vain. Even if I am to be poured out as a drink offering upon the sacrificial offering of your faith, I am glad and rejoice with you all. Likewise, you also, also should be glad and rejoice with me. Please rise for the Holy Gospel. <clears throat> the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 21st chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus entered the temple, the chief priests and the elders of the people came up to him as he was teaching and said, By what authority are you doing these things? And who gave you this authority? Jesus answered them, I also will ask you one question. And if you tell me the answer, then I also will tell you by what authority I do these things. The baptism of John, from where did it come? From heaven or from man? And they discussed it among themselves, saying, If we say from heaven, he will say to us, Why then did you not believe him? But if we say from man, we are afraid of the crowd, for they all hold that John was a prophet. So they answered Jesus, We do not know. And he said to them, 
neither will I tell you by what authority I do these things. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We now confess our common faith in the triune God using the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated as we continue with our sermon hymn. And just a reminder, uh, when we start the third verse, that's when the uh, kids that are going to go over to the kids' sermon can make their way out. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. So we're going to do something a little bit different today. Uh, we're going to focus primarily on our Old Testament and our epistle reading from our letter from Paul to the Philippians. And I want to come at this maybe in a, day, in a way that we, we don't normally talk about the faith. So let's read this part up here together. Children of God without blemish in the midst of a crooked and twisted generation among whom you shine as lights in the world. Not about you guys, this time of year is kind of a rough time for me because it starts getting dark earlier and earlier and earlier and earlier. And it stays dark later. I won't go into all the laters, okay? But you get the point, yeah. I showed up to church this morning, 7 o'clock. The lights were still on in the parking lot. It's scary. <laughs> it's coming. What's coming? Winter. Winter when we have less light. Winter when we have less day. And I don't know about you guys, I struggle with seasonal affect disorder. All that darkness leads to lots of depression. 
What's there to do in Wisconsin when you're shut up in the house with your loved ones? Besides that, okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get fat, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. But that's the kind of darkness we expect. That's the kind of darkness those of us who have lived in Wisconsin any number of years, we can consider normal. There's a different kind of darkness, though, that makes winters here even more difficult. It's darkness that comes from a time when we're promised day. It's days where it's so cloud-covered that it feels like it's practically night. And, and that makes, I think, it even harder for us because we're expecting day. We're yearning for day. We're yearning for sunlight. And all we get is this quasi-darkness. Now, you might be wondering, what the heck does that have to do with our reading? Well, what connects our Old Testament lesson from the prophet Ezekiel and our epistle lesson, Paul's letter to the church of the Philippians, is there's a common theme. God wants his people to shine their light. Not even their light, to shine the light of Christ into the world. When God called the Israelites... God told them that he wanted them to be a special people, like a city on a hill shining out into the darkness, showing the people the way home, the way to safety and security. Everything God did with the Israelites and for the Israelites, he did for a special purpose, to reveal his glory to the world. I don't know about you guys, as I read the prophet Ezekiel's writings here today, there's something that stands out. God is mad. He's not just mad. He's so mad he can hardly talk. You ever do that as a parent? You look at your children and you're so mad, words don't come out like in whole sentences. They just bubble out as sounds. It's like, burr, burr. am I the only one that ever happens to? Just wait, young people. It will happen to you, okay? Yeah, it's not that your parents are having strokes or anything. It's just you're so angry. It's just you can't even get it out in sentences. God's angry at the Israelites. He's angry because this proverb that they're teaching, this proverb that they're teaching in his name, it's the opposite of what he had told them. It's the opposite of what he had done for them again and again and again. Instead of being a people who shined as lights in the world, the Old Testament Israelites became scoundrels, worshipped other gods and goddesses, took advantage of each other more so even than the foreigners did at times. And so here through Ezekiel, God is saying to the Israelites, change. Now, Paul is not saying that exact thing. Paul's not expressing any anger here to the Philippians. But he is encouraging the, the Christians at Philippi. He's encouraging them to live in the same way God had encouraged the Israelites in the Old Testament, to live, to shine the light into the world. And that's the same message for you and I today. God is calling us to shine our light. There's a famous German uh, theologian by the name of Dietrich Bonhoeffer. He was a, a Lutheran pastor at, at the time of the Nazis, the time of World War II. In fact, he was in prison for his faith and his resistance to Nazism. He was in prison because the, the government was telling all the pastors, here's the message we want you to preach. And they were preaching hatred. Dietrich Bonhoeffer stood up to that and said, no, I'm not going to preach what you want me to preach. I'm going to preach the truth. I'm going to preach the Bible. So they threw him in prison. 
They later executed him. The crime that they posted on him was that he supposedly had caused one of the assassination attempts on Adolf Hitler. He didn't. He wrote a great book. If you've never read it or heard of it, it's called The Cost of Discipleship. But Dietrich Bonhoeffer, one of his famous quotes is this. Let's read this together if you can see it. Your life as a Christian should make non-believers question their disbelief in God. Have you ever thought about your life this way? Have you ever thought about shining as lights in this context? This is sanctification. This, isn't, this has nothing to do with justification. This has nothing to do with you and I getting into heaven ourselves. That's all about Christ. But what about your neighbor? Let's go back to that analogy of darkness in Wisconsin. We pretty much know that anywhere we turn in the world, and even unbelievers know, anywhere they turn in the world, when they hear crazy messages like all the weird stuff that's happening today in our world, that's just darkness. When people are turned to themselves and w to seek happiness, they're told, well, do drugs, drink alcohol, except for in the winter in Wisconsin. Shame on you. No, I'm just joking. This mess, is, I'm in trouble now. Okay, um, that's my wife, by the way. No. <laughs> um, when they're told, you know, happiness is in sleeping with as many people as you want, or happiness is in having all the cars, the trucks, the toys, Except for if they're Chevys. You can't, that's, there's no happiness there. But, uh, when the world teaches a message that says, lop off parts of your body and you'll be happier, all that's clearly darkness. But what about when Christians, Christians much like those clouded days, we're looking for sunlight. We want daytime. And yet we're getting darkness. What about when we're the ones spreading gossip? What about when we're the ones cheating on our spouses? Turning to all these other things for happiness. Chasing after other gods and goddesses called money, sex, politics. Are we shining as light? Or are we like those cloudy days that's trying to fool people, hurting people? I know this is a tough message. My guess is this message is hitting every one of us, myself included, right in the heart. We all know things we've done that were terrible things? How do we shine as light? Well, one of the greatest ways that we can shine as light is in the forgiveness of our Lord. Not just going to the cross to seek his forgiveness for our own sin, but going to the people we've hurt and asking their forgiveness too. I'm a Christian and I'm a pastor not because I'm any better than any of you. I don't sin any less than you do. I probably sin more. I try to drink more beer than most of you, I think. But no, I'm just joking. You get the point. I'm up here because I'm trying to encourage you to turn to the same place I turn to for solace, for hope. It's not in my own actions. It's not in my own perfection. It's only in the perfection of Christ. It's only in his perfect sacrifice that you and I can have hope for heaven. But what about the millions of people out there in the world? What about the hundreds and thousands right here in our communities where we live, work, and play? Where is their hope? If we don't look any different, 
if we don't act any different, if we don't ever share Christ crucified and risen, how will they know? How will they ever experience the light of Christ if all we keep giving them is darkness? One of the number one things I hear today among young generation, why they don't like the church. I don't mean this church. I mean churches in general congregations in general because you can put a different name you can put a different denominational name you can go to any different place and you're going to experience a lot of the same stuff people get stuck on themselves let me read this to you again from Paul right before the section that we read earlier he says this in verse 4 of Philippians 2 let each of you look not only to his own interest, but also to the interests of others. As churches, as congregations, we need desperately to learn how to look beyond just what I want or what you want. Think about the people who are struggling the most in our churches, the visitors who are coming in, who are struggling and looking for a place of light, a place of hope, a place of solace. And ask ourselves the question again and again and again. How can I be the light of Christ to every single person I interact with today? How can I lift somebody's spirits somehow pointing them to Christ. But the next person I'm going to run into. So instead of complaining, instead of whining, instead of chewing somebody out, how can I be the light of Christ? How can I shine the light of Christ? Do you get my, what I'm trying to get at? I know it's getting really quiet out there. It's uncomfortable. You obviously all are like, man, this is not fun. Yeah. But it's for a reason. This is what we as a church need to struggle with every day. Not just when we're here, but when we're out there. Why? Well, let's read Dietrich Bonhoeffer's words one more time. Your life as a Christian should make non-believers question their disbelief in God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And now may the peace of God that surpasses all understanding guard and keep your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus unto life everlasting. Depart in his peace and his joy. Amen. So I'm going to invite you to rise as we sing our fourth verse of our song. The congregation wants to have a seat. We'll continue with the gathering of our offerings.
I invite you to rise now for the prayers of our church. So our special prayers today, we have uh, something to celebrate. We're celebrating with Bev and Dennis Delabru as they celebrated their anniversary. That's what the flowers are up here for. And uh, so we are going to pray for them and all marriages out there. The Lord continue to strengthen and give us joyful days ahead. And we also continue to pray for healing and strength for Charlie Peisler and Jeff Lampy, Deb Roser and Emma Healing, Hayes Jaden, James Smithwick, Bonnie Christensen, Brandy Lefebvre, Pat Mathieu, for Melody and for Marie, for Michael Lampy and Michael Funk, for Patty Fry, for Faye Perdell and Michelle Phillips, and Peggy Measler. I also have a moment of silence if there's anybody uh, that you want to just think about at that time, the Lord will hear that prayer. So let us pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, as we come before you each day in this world, Lord, having been called into your light, having been made part of Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior, we pray, Lord, that you would help us cling to him, that your spirit, your counselor, would call us to him, Lord, when we wander off into the dark. The Lord, that same spirit through your word would convict us when we fail you. When we do things with our life, Lord, that appear more as darkness than light, that, Lord, your spirit would help us change our ways, that he would give us a spirit of humility and servanthood, to see the world through your eyes as you look at all of us and all of the world, Lord, with compassion, seeing sheep without a shepherd. Send us into that work, Lord. Send us into that field, that ministry field, to go and speak your good news, to live in your light and to bring others into your light. Forgive us, Lord, too, for our sins. We pray today, Lord, for your church, found in so many forms and fashions in our world, that it would continue to be your light as well. Keep it from wandering off into myths and lies. Keep it, Lord, from teaching things in your name that aren't true. Help it, Lord, be your light, your ark in the world rescuing people from sin, death, and the devil. We pray for its leaders, that you would help them, Lord, continue to guide us according to your word, that you would call them to repent if we ever wander off. And through it all, Lord, again, we would speak Christ crucified and alone for salvation. We give you thanks today, Lord, for the many years that you've given to Bev and Dennis in marriage, and we pray that you continue not only to strengthen them and give them many happy years in the future, but that you would be with all marriages. Strengthen them. Help them fight against the world's work, Lord, which is tearing them apart. Help them, Lord, discover each day anew what you've given to the other in this one flesh union. Finally, we lift up those who are sick and in pain. Give them strong faith, Lord, as they endure this time of suffering, some to be healed and others to come and join you soon. Whatever your will, we pray that it would be done. But Lord, if it is for them to be healed, then let it be so quickly. Ease their pain. Lord, we lift up these prayers to you now as you have taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. On earth as it is in heaven, give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. For those of you who are going to commune out there in the pew, if you please would take your little cups out of the bag and hold them up in front of you at this time. Welcome to the Lord's table. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the same night which he was betrayed, took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat, this is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup, and when he had supped and given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, shed for you for the forgiveness of all your sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. For those communing out there in the pew, please take, eat, and drink the very body and blood of Christ given for you. And the rest of the congregation can have a seat.
And now may this true body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you all unto life everlasting. Depart in God's peace and in his joy. Amen. And we sing the last verse of our song. Lord, bless you and keep you. Lord, make his face shine upon you, be gracious to you. Lord, look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen. So again, I do want to thank you all for coming and worshiping with us today, especially visitors out there. Hopefully you felt welcome and you are invited back at any point in the future. Most of my sermons are not as pointed as today's was, right? Yeah? Okay. But if you got anything out of the sermon today, what was it? Shine your light. Yeah, okay, awesome. Uh, in terms of announcements, all kinds of stuff in the announcement bulletin back there, not just stuff from our parish, but all the neighboring parishes around. Uh, so I highly encourage you to grab one of those. A couple of things to highlight. There are several sign-up sheets on the table at the very back. Um, one of the new sign-up sheets that there is for Sandy Krause's crafting class. If you would like to do the October one, please sign up on the table. You'll see it on a clipboard on the table back there. They're doing like a wire tree, and it's like on a rock with wires and then jewels or kind of like uh, plastic jewels on the tree. And uh, so she, there's a lot of supplies to go into that one. So if you would please sign up so she knows how much supplies to bring with her, uh, she would greatly appreciate that. And that's coming up real quick, right, Sandy? Uh, is that two week, two Thursdays? The 5th, so this Thursday. Okay, this Thursday. So if you please would sign up back there so she knows again how many supplies to have. Um, there's a sign-up sheet also for the paintball, right? If you want to talk to that one. Uh, yeah, so we do have our sign-up sheet back there for paintball. I think we're at about 25 people right now, but if more want to go, that's totally fine. And when it gets closer, we'll arrange uh, like how we're going to carpool and things like that. Uh, youth stuff, for those that don't know, maybe there are some high school age people that don't know, we do do high school life hour, and it's in the back garage. So between the services, that's where we are. If there's any high school agers that uh, want to meet us back there for that, and then also we have, uh, we're doing youth group, which is, we call it post-confirmation youth group. So that's high school and 7th and 8th grade that have confirmed already. Every other Wednesday, 6.30 to 8. We don't meet this week. We meet next week. That's also in the back garage. And there's something else. Oh, our uh, first high school game night of the year is coming up on October 28th. Normally we do them on Friday, but doing the conflicts, this one's actually going to be a Saturday. So that first one will be October 28th. And it's in the bulletin uh, for the how they're planned out through the year. So, okay, awesome. I'm um, trying to think of anything. Oh, we're collecting shoes back there. Uh, those shoes are j lightly or gently used, or new shoes if you have those. Um, we'll do sandals, I think slip-ons and tennis shoes, but no boots. And uh, those are going to be shipped over to third world countries, people in need there, and then any proceeds from it uh, will come back to support some. Um, children's groups, I believe, like youth groups in Green Bay area. So again, it's a great ministry. And if you have a closet, you want to free up some space. Um, ladies, you never have too many shoes, or guys for that matter. Uh, so if you want to bring some shoes in, you're more than welcome to do that. Um, other things, I'm going to invite Ed up. He's got an announcement as well, I think. Um, Oh, that's right. T so today, if you'd like to sign up for Sidewalk Profits, today's the last day to do that. Uh, so if you are interested in that, talk to either Autumn Bukema or Marissa uh, Byrne. Um, Marissa's back over there. And so, so talk to one. I said the wrong name, didn't I? Autumn Lindsmeyer and Marissa Byrne. Uh, talk to one of those two, and uh, they will get, get you hooked up with that. So there, the Sidewalk Profits concert's coming up in November, but we need to get tickets now. So. So I'm just going to hand it over to you guys. Um, 
Ed and I were kind of talking at the fall festival that we had going on, and as everybody knows, um, or it's been in the bulletin, October is Pastor Appreciation Month, and we were just talking, you know, how blessed our congregation is to have not one but two pastors that really serve us, and we just want to give them a small token of appreciation on behalf of our congregation, and you know, just have seeing how many people participated in that event, and just with a few hours, everybody just had time to visit and sit down and have lunch with your family, and I guess one way we can really continue to show our appreciation is continuing to reach out, you know, if there's, you want to, everybody can serve, you know, it's, you know, something as simple as maybe helping with writing the um, birthday cards, thank you notes, or helping with just any age group that there's something here that, you know, God's given us talents, and you know, reach out to Ed if there's something you want to get participated in or pastors. And um, so it, it's just a helpful and you know, can just continue to spread. So again, we just want to thank them for all that they've done for us. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, so just a reminder again, after service, there are donuts down here. If anybody would like to come down, we'll have some fellowship time. We'll get coffee made real quick, and uh, we'll just, hopefully this is something we can continue doing um, week after week, and that way if people want to sign up maybe to bring something, or how many of you like just having donuts every week? Be honest. Okay. Well, apparently you don't like the donuts. Wow. Okay, more for me. Um, last thing is birthdays. How many, oh, there's, plus there's farm fresh eggs back there if anybody wants those. Anybody's birth this week, birthdays this week? Zane had a birthday, okay. I think Roxanne had a birthday, maybe. Yeah. You see it in the, if, I, if I'm friends with you on Facebook, Dana had a birthday. Okay, so we got Zane, Roxanne, uh, Dana, who else? That's it? All right, well, here we go. So, so we have Zane, Roxanne, Dana. Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday Zane, Roxanne, and Dana, happy birthday to you, and many more. That's right. All right, we'll greet you back there. Have a great and blessed week, everybody.